And I'm going to talk mainly about what, uh, the bit of a background initially um, about the diagnosis of chronic rejection and why we need to address it. Um, what, what determines graft outcome and some of the evidence that's immune-mediated injury, uh, what role <coughs> antibody appears to be playing. Um, and then evidence uh, both from other studies, both in animal models um, and human models, and then from my uh, work in the lab, that our specific T cells with evidence of B cell dependence might be an important cause of chronic antibody mediated rejection or, or chronic rejection that's immune mediated, shall we say. So um, if you came to this course a couple of years ago, Tony showed this slide. Um, and the purpose of showing this really is to uh, demonstrate that although we've made progress in treating patients with reducing acute rejection such that the graft survival in the first year has um, fallen, sorry, I don't, yes, has, fa has fallen now, so sorry, graft survival has improved from 90% to over 95% now in the first year <coughs> post-transplant. The attrition rate, so the ongoing loss of grafts over the following decades, has remained virtually unchanged. <coughs> Um, so if you look here, even in the, in the lower risk patients who are the first time transplant, um, not being pre-sensitized by a previous transplant, the um, patients who have a deceased donor transplant, in 1989 who were transplanted, their grafts, half of them would have lost their graft by 12 years. And that has improved slightly for 16 years. Um, but the majority of that increase has been because of, of one year graft survival, which is due to many um, uh, things such as better HLA matching, better screening for antibody, um, desensitization protocols maybe in some patients and, and so on and so forth. Um, the, just to point out, this is projected graft survival because obviously a lot of these patients haven't had their graft for that long. But it shows you that the trend uh, that we've made with acute uh, rejection hasn't been uh, reflected in chronic rejection. And why do we have to address this? Well, clearly, once patients lose their graft, they're back on dialysis, and it changes both their quality of life, increases health costs, um, and uh, impairs both uh, patient survival and, um, and uh, comorbidity as well. So, um, moving on, really, to uh, evidence. So, evidence that uh, chronic uh, rejection is antibody uh, or immune-mediated. So the reason to show this slide, if I'm going to move around because I'm finding it difficult to see what I'm talking about, um, is there are multiple factors that have been shown to be associated with chronic rejection. Many of them are non-immunological, um, but I've highlighted in red the ones that are immune-mediated and immunological. So HLA matching is very important. Um, panel reactive antibodies, this is an old slide, of course now we'd measure HLA antibodies and particularly donor-specific HLA antibodies or other donor-specific antibodies. Um, episodes of acute rejection, especially uh, vascular rejection, so antibody mediated rejection, if you like, on the biopsy, um, and late episodes of rejection, which may well be associated with non compliance or acute cellular rejection later, or antibody mediated rejection. Um, and then I'll, I'll move on briefly as well to talk about uh, obviously subclinical rejection and, and C4D binding is important because it, it's evidence that you've had antibody binding to graft from activation. Um, and, and is evidence of uh, antibody mediated rejection in the current criteria. So um, this uh, is one of, of two or three large studies now which have shown that uh, antibodies, the development of antibodies post-transplant are strongly associated with chronic um, graft loss. So if you test patients at a, a single point in time and follow them up, if they test HLA antibody negative, then only 17% of those patients will lose their graft in the next five and a half years. But if you're donor-specific antibody pos positive, um, then almost 50% or over 50% of those patients will lose their graft over the next five and a half years. And you have this intermediate group, which is not entirely explained, in those patients who don't have donor-specific antibody, but it's HLA antibody positive, who are also at greater risk of losing their graft. Now, I'll come back to this briefly in a bit, but this is a whole cohort of patients with all levels of graft function. So you've got to remember that this isn't corrected for underlying graft function, and, and the reason that's important, I'll come back to a little bit later on.